Welcome back to the shop, everyone. Today, we're gonna have some fun because I got a new tool in the mail for the Cincinnati milling machine, and I cannot wait to try it out. I've already shot an episode on this whole milling machine talking about how the whole thing works. So go back and check that video out right here. I'm gonna leave a link to that. But what I do have here in the mail is a new end mill. Oh, baby. Oh. Well, it's not new end mill. I mean, new to me end mill. Look at this beast. A Walter Integral 50 taper, two and a half inch wide, eight inch depth of cut, and it has 44 carbide square tooth inserts. Bought on eBay for 150 bucks. Most of these are fairly decent, so I think we can get a good day's cut today to try it out. I'm hoping it's not bent. It could be wobbly, because this is an eBay purchase, but for $150, I think this is a pretty good gamble. And this brand new probably cost, just the tool itself was probably $1,000. And then for all the inserts, so every 10 is probably 200, 250 bucks. So there's a $2,000 set of kit right here. This was purchased brand new. Now here's a good comparison to the high speed tool end mill, a little bigger in diameter and the same cutting depth. But this has an integral 50 taper, so it should be a little stronger. So here's my plan for today. I would like to see if this milling machine can take at least half a depth of cut, maybe a full, at least six to eight inches. At a speed of three to four inches per minute, that's double the speed of this one. So we're gonna see how this bad boy performs in the big Cincinnati. So I wanna answer some questions you guys had for me in the last video, which was, why did I not use coolant on the eight inch giant face mill? I didn't use coolant on the eight inch face mill because I wanted you guys to actually see the cut happening. It would spray all over the place. And secondly, the camera gear that I'm using to shoot is fairly close proximity to the machine. So I don't want to get any of that sticky, yucky coolant all over it. So the second question you guys asked me about was the load meter, is it working? because when you first start this machine up, you can see that the machine needle jumps up and then when the load is down, it stops. Remember, this machine has 50 horsepower and it's all gear reduced. It's not like a typical CNC machine where you're overdriving to get RPMs. This machine's going the other direction, so it's just torque multiplying. The next question you guys had was, I think you put your milling machine too close to the back wall. You're not gonna be able to change the belts. If the time does come in the next decade, I gotta change them, I will scoot the machine out by wrapping a strap around the back and pulling it out from the wall. The next question you guys asked me was, what happens to the water as it comes out of the snout and it hits the table, where does it go? Well, it's real simple. It travels down the T-slots and into the drain at each end of the table and then finds its way down a trough down the back and then into the base of the machine into a sump. And then from there it gets pumped back up and the cycle starts all over again. I still haven't flushed this thing out, so we're gonna end up with a little bit yucky looking coolant, but it'll still work. The last question is, why did I decide to conventional mill instead of climb mill? That is a great topic for a discussion, so let me explain. Let's take a look at conventional milling first. You need to think of the end mill and the work beyond a crash course destination for each other. The end mill is turning in one direction and the feed is going the other. This ensures that the end mill can't take any more bite than what I feed into it. Climb milling feeds the material the same direction the end mill is turning. On a manual machine, this is typically avoided due to slop in the ways or the lead screw, which could potentially make the end mill bite and take the material away from you. Here's what the chip looks like on conventional milling. It starts off thin, then gradually gets thicker. This has its drawbacks too, like it rubs more, the chips like to go up and fall in front of the cutter, eventually getting recut, which reduces the surface finish. On climb milling, the chip gets cut thick to thin, heat gets transmitted into the chip, and also the chip gets behind the cutter so it doesn't get recut, ultimately giving you a better surface finish. Because the cutter hits the surface first, it has the potential to get dull faster when cutting the mill scale or sand castings. But really, that's the least of my worries. I worry about trying to take too heavy of a cut and my work not being secure enough. And in climb milling, it has the potential to rip it out of the vise, probably destroying the part and or breaking the cutter, which can be pretty scary sometimes. So basically, I just played it safe with conventional milling because I didn't know anything about the new milling machine. 
I do have the confidence in this machine now to climb mill, so we're gonna be using that technique on this block of steel right here. So this is the same block that we used in the last episode that we've faced milled and side cut, except I'm gonna turn it on end and cut, what are we at, six and three quarter? Let's just call it seven because it's the internet. We can stretch the truth a little bit. Four and three quarter is now five inches. Let the chips fly, I'm ready to go. Let's try a quarter inch depth of cut for the first pass and that full seven inches. I'm gonna be turning 279 RPM and then we're gonna try for three and a quarter inches per minute. We'll start there and see where we end up. I really wanna see this cut in slow motion. So I think we should set up the Flex 2K to really slow it down to analyze what those chips look like when they're getting flung off. And that way maybe we can see if the end the mill is twisted or warped or flopping around, this is the tool to do it. Cooling on. This big cutter is handling this quarter of an inch depth of cut amazing. No chatter, no vibrations. I can tell that a few of the carbide inserts aren't cutting quite particularly clean, but that's okay. It's pretty crazy to see all that heat getting transferred into the chip from the climb milling. It's pretty impressive. Well, that was pretty awesome. This cutter is actually doing really good. I don't see any wobble or bend. It's pretty straight. It's definitely not a finish cutter, definitely a roughing cutter. This cutter was just barely chugging along. I want to take what we took on the high speed end mill. Let's do like an inch wide cut, a full seven inches deep. I think the machine is going to have no problem handling this. pretty interesting when I watch the footage, I'm starting to see these little tiny slivers come off the end mill. And then really analyzing what's happening, I can see a little bit of a chatter happening. And I think that's what's causing those little tiny chips to form. But overall, it's still a flat out hog in metal. This would be nearly impossible to see without the slow motion camera. It's pretty cool to watch. That was fun. That was one inch wide, seven inches deep, running at two and five eight inches per minute. I don't think that's nearly where we should stop. I think we should try to go a little bit bigger. How big is that? From the edge of the vise over, inch and a half on the next pass. I wanna see if I can tell a difference between climb milling and conventional milling. So let's switch it up. It looks like I'm running into a rigidity issue on the end mill. I can see quite a bit of chatter, so maybe next time I need to really look at my speeds and feeds. But man, it is still actually cutting very well. Just look at those huge chips coming off there. It's quite impressive. I also think the inserts are dull. This could be contributing to the chatter also. So that would be a really fun experiment to try all new inserts and try the same cut again.
that is gigantic. Look at the pile of chips. They are everywhere. I got a good deal on that cutter. That was so fun. I love these experiments. I love knowing what the machine is totally capable of doing. This has no purpose except for your pleasure and mine. Thank you guys for watching. I have a big mess to clean up and I'll see you when I'm done with that. <laughs>